Back here on the Cover 3 Podcast, live on CBS Sports Network. Well, this Saturday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, that will be your place to find big time on CBS with the Big Ten game on CBS being Wisconsin at USC. Now, the lay of the land is that, uh, obviously, Wisconsin, last time we saw them, it was it was very disappointing. I mean, this is, this is a Badgers team that has lost Tyler Van Dyke due to injury. Uh, this is a Badgers team that, in its big, huge game against Alabama, uh, was not able to be competitive deep into the game. One of the worst losses for Wisconsin's program dating all the way back to the 2014 Big Ten title game. And then for USC, absolute heartbreak. You had a lead late in the game in Ann Arbor. Uh, Michigan goes all the way down the field for the game-winning touchdown. Our own Danny Cannell was on the sideline. Great coverage before the game for CBS Sports, CBS Sports HQ. So, Danny, you were there firsthand. You got to see USC. Um, Based on everything you were able to gather since, talk to, you know, where do you think where do you think this USC team is at right now? What are you expecting from the Trojans as now they've got to put the pieces back together with very little time to linger in the loss? Tom and I were just talking on HQ about the performance and how we both kind of feel. I feel the same, and I think Tom said he feels better, but I was already pretty bullish on USC after winning against LSU and where their defense stood and where the physical mindset came in. But I also think we both hit on a mental maturity and a mental toughness Mm. that USC showcased in that game, you know, trailing at halftime, looked like it could get ugly, clawed their way back in. Miller Moss had a pick six, puts his team in a position to win the game after that. Um, There's no doubt it was a devastating loss, but I almost feel like as opposed to the season spiraling out of control where they could potentially throw in the towel, a towel, I think this might motivate this team and see just how special of a season this could be. So I feel really good about this USC team coming back, focused, looking to put that win in the rearview mirror and looking to take take it out on a beaten up Wisconsin team. Daniel, I think those are some great points. I am a little more cautious on USC than I was entering the weekend. And it's not necessarily because of what happened in the Michigan game. Michigan game, they got negative game scripted. Michigan's not a team that you want to play from behind because they can continue to run the football. You don't get to get them out of their comfort zones. We know Michigan really can't throw the football uh, right now. But think about who USC has played. Like LSU didn't cover against South Carolina. They didn't cover against Mm -hmm. UCLA. They looked kind of mid in those games, right? Utah State lost, I think, by multiple scores to Temple over the weekend. So a couple of these prior USC performances now are a little bit less impressive to me than they were in the moment because those teams, as as it turns out, are maybe not quite as good as we thought in the moment. But I still think USC is a damn good football team. They've got a lot of really nice pieces. If you played again, I I still think I'm going to pick USC to win in the big house. Maybe not cover, but I still think they're a slightly better team than Michigan. I think they're a way better team than Wisconsin. But you're clearly missing the body blow theory. USC is just beating those teams up so badly that it takes them weeks to recover from what they've gotten from them. I, I'm with you, Danny. I do think that like that, the win over LSU was surprising because they looked good. They were not expected to win that game to open the season. So I am a little more impressed by what I've seen, or at least a little more heartened by what I saw of USC in that Michigan loss because they got knocked down and they were able to get back up, which is not something that we have seen them do very often in the last few years. Typically, you knock them down and they just, it, they stay on the ground, cover their head, and hope for the best. But I think that this is a game where they are going to have the script in their favor against this Wisconsin team. They're at home. Wisconsin is banged up. Wisconsin has not been playing well to begin with. But what I'm interested in, can we see some more explosive plays in this USC passing game? Because we saw Alabama hit a bunch of explosives against this Wisconsin defense, but that's kind of what Alabama has been passing wise. It's like it's either boom or bust. Jalen Milrose is either hitting somebody deep or he's just running for it. And I think that what we've seen so far is USC has been more efficient, I would say, than explosive. And even with the Alabama results outside of it, Western Michigan and South Dakota were able to hit some big passing plays against Wisconsin too. So I'm looking to see, is this the week Kyron Hudson and Zach Branch can get loose in that secondary Roman free for some big plays? Because this is still a Lincoln Riley team. And we've all been focused on the USC defense and the improvements that we have seen. But I would also still like to see all those, you know, 400 yard passing games and those 45 pointers. So I'm, I'm wondering if we get to see our first glimpse at that for the against Wisconsin. Yeah, Tom, I mean, the the Alabama result was not good. The only other things we have is Western Michigan and South Dakota. I mean, there's 
if you're a Wisconsin fan to me, you're grasping. You're you're just hoping on all hope that Braden Locke's going to be able to be there. And there is something to be said for the fact that you know, Braden Locke went into the Alabama game expecting Tyler Van Dyke to be the starting quarterback. You've had a little bit of time. Offensive coordinator Phil Longo has been able to try to get things ready. So I guess uh, to set this up, almost asking for a lean or an expectation or a thought on how this is going to play out, you know, with a big old point spread on the board, like Tom, do do you think Wisconsin's got something for the Trojans here? <laughs> they the better answer might they be haven't no. had much all season. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I think if you're Wisconsin, you kind of want to do what Michigan did last week. You want to just kind of lean on the run game and put them in a situation where you're keeping that USC offense off the field. The question is Michigan was able to get some explosive runs last week against USC. Wisconsin has not had explosive runs all season long. In fact, they rank 125th nationally in explosive run rate. And that was with Tyler Van Dyke. So now that Tyler Van Dyke is out and Braden Locke is in, I don't know how much respect USC is going to have for this Wisconsin passing game with its backup quarterback and a group of receivers who, frankly, outside of Will Pauling, have been extremely underwhelming. So I think if you're the Badgers, you really need to find it on the ground. You've been trying to run all season. You have not been ultra successful. You've stuck to it anyway. Maybe this is the week. We saw Kalel Mullings running guys over in that USC defense. Maybe they're still bruised from last week. Maybe these Wisconsin backs can find a little more lanes and a little more room to run. So that's got to be the approach that the Badgers take. I'm not overly optimistic. It's going to work because I do think this USC offense is just a little too good for them, even with that defense, if they keep it close, but there's a chance, just not a great one. I, I agree with Tom. Like, like Braden Locke is not unplayably bad. We, we saw him last year operate the offense at like a, not a good level, but he's not horrendous unplayable backup level but at the same time he couldn't beat out Mordecai last year and they went and got Van Dyke for a reason even after Van Dyke was legitimately terrible at Miami so that probably does have some signal that decision the coaching staff made that he didn't win either of those quarterback competitions does USC show up is there a hangover effect from the Michigan game if USC is focused they should roll Wisconsin I, I don't have Wisconsin as a top half team in the Big Ten right now. To me, they look really below average on, on the defensive side of the ball, on the lines of scrimmage. I still think the secondary is good. I think USC should have a heck of a time running the football against this Wisconsin front. Western Michigan ran it on them. Alabama had no problem running it on them. They look kind of small to me. We know they lost Thompson uh, in the preseason, who was one of their best defensive linemen, unfortunately. Uh, if USC has the right focus here, this game shouldn't be close. And that's what I'm looking for, because I want to see USC. They've been a little bit too pass-heavy for my liking, especially when you consider years past. They're, run, uh, they're running the ball at a 36% uh, rush rate, so they are passing the ball all over the yard. Was it 51, 52 attempts versus Michigan? That game, you know, that's not the type of balance. I don't even think Lincoln Riley, who does like to throw the football, wants to see. And something curious I was just thinking about is that, you know, Lincoln Riley's QBs have always been pretty good runners, whether it was Caleb Williams, who had 11 rushing touchdowns last year, 10 rushing touchdowns the season before that, whether it was Jalen Hurts, whether it was Kyler Murray, whether it's Baker Mayfield, they're all pretty mobile quarterbacks. Miller Moss is more of a pocket passer. They need to balance out that rush game to take some of the pressure off him, and this should be the game where they get right. So I'll be curious to see if they can, in fact, establish those running backs, get them going, get a little bit more balance to this offense. Yeah. I, I think that Wisconsin keeping this game close would be a USC problem is the way that I see it right now. And because I'm hopeful in what my initial, you know, instinct and impressions were of the Trojans, uh, then I'm, I'm thinking that USC is going to be able to take care of business and be able to remain in the mix uh, there even after taking a loss to Michigan here in September. Well, coming up on the other side, Two of those teams that have yet to lose this season are just a couple weeks away from a game that we had circled as one of the games of the year. So let's take the temperature in Columbus and Eugene. How are Ohio State and Oregon looking? Looking ahead to that October 12th matchup. We'll get into all that and more next. <laughs> 